Okay, the last situation we're going to look at with this particular example is when the sale occurs, much like the previous example, but instead of having the revaluation occur in the subsidiary, the revaluation will have occurred in the consolidation worksheets. So nothing happens in, in the subsidiary. So to begin with, we've already affected the land, sorry, the cash and investment entry in the parent. So that's already happened. Now, when the sale occurs for the subsidiary, debit cash 300, credit land 100, credit gain on sale of 200. Because this time, the land is actually only being held at, a one, at 100 in the books of the, of the subsidiary. So we have a gain of 200 in this case. The tax effects of that are debit tax expense of 60 and credit cash 60. Um, in this case, the accounting value of the land and the tax value of the land is the same. So the amount we owe the amount we owe the authorities, um, which we calculated as 60 previously, is just the tax expense here. So let's go through and put these effects in. So cash goes up by 300 for the debit, land goes down to zero, and we get a gain on sale and retained earnings, plus 200. Tax expense reduces our retained earnings because again, I'm cheating a little bit and just going straight through to retained earnings and cash comes down by 60. So we've got $240 in cash in the subsidiary and we've got $300,000 $300, of share capital and $340,000 of retained earnings. And so those have all happened in the subsidiary's accounts. Now let's just work through, and I'm going to do it the long way and then reduce it down, but to, I want to go the long way to show you how we get to the reduced entry. So the first thing we have to do is the fair value adjustment for the land, and we've done this previously, so I'll just repeat it quickly here. So we debit land 100, 150 credit DTL 45, and credit fair value adjustment 105. We then have the, cons uh, the elimination entry, which is getting rid of all the pre-acquisition equity, which is capital retained earnings of 200. Again, remember, it is not the balance which is sitting there, it is the pre-acquisition amount debit the fair value adjustment, which is 105, debit goodwill, which is 95, and credit investment, which is 700. And let's put all those effects in. So share capital, retained earnings, fair value adjustment, goodwill, and the investment. So everything's balancing, but there's some funny things going on, and I just want to highlight what's happened. Land, even though we've sold it, if we leave the adjustments as they are, we've left with a $150,000 balance there. In addition, the deferred tax liability is still sitting there, even though the land associated with that deferred tax liability has gone. And retained earnings is probably not being carried at the right amount. So I'm just going to scroll down. We're going to see what we have to do with those. Now, the land is carried too, is carried too high at 150. So we credit land, and that will bring it down. The other effect is, from the group's point of view, the group has sold land valued at $250,000, so it's only made a $50,000 gain. But from the subsidiary's point of view, 
it's made a $200,000 gain. So that's actually 150,000 too much in terms of the gain that's being recognized. So we need to reduce that by debit gain on sale. And so if you take those two in, retained earnings, so there's already debit in there, let's add another one. We end up with 350. And land is credited 150. And so that gets the land sorted out. So that's looking good. But we've still got a problem with the DTL and retained earnings. And the next effect is a tax effect. And it's actually reducing the amount of tax expense that's recognized this year. Because if we simply add up the tax expense from the subsidiary, they had a tax expense of 60, which is based on the $200,000 profit. But from a group point of view, the profit was only $50. So that tax expense is overstated and it's overstated to the tune of $45,000. And that $45,000 is because the 150 times by 30% will give you $45. That 150 is the amount that the profit was overstated. So if we're reducing the gain, we've got to also reduce the tax expense in relation to that. But an important point about that, just because we're, we're reducing the tax expense, we are not reducing the amount of money that is being paid to the tax authorities. That cash flow actually happens. All this is is, is an accounting effect. So we debit deferred tax liability and that gets rid of that. And we go to retained earnings and a tax, a reduction in tax expense will actually increase your retained earnings. So we end up with retained earnings of 35. And we scroll back up. And what we have is a group with $240,000 in cash, $400,000 in other assets, $95,000 in goodwill, $700,000 in share capital, $35,000 in retained earnings, no land, no investment, no deferred tax liabilities, no revaluation surplus, no fair value adjustment. And it's looking much the same as what it did when we did it through the subsidiary itself.